Hello, my name is Oscar Cortez, Tech 2.0 coordinator at LaGuardia Community College. During our coordinators meeting, we have been reading various books for on professional development. Um, one of the latest books that we actually completed is called Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paulo Freire. Um, Jalissa Camilo Valerio, peer advisor coordinator, and I work together on chapter one of the text. So our main theme for our chapter was mm, oppressed versus oppressor. So that was one of our themes for our group when we met. So after reading the book and completing it with all of our uh, fellow coordinators, one thing that I actually took away from this is that it has opened my mind as to why certain methods of education shaped and molded my mindset back um, in my high school days and how that has changed up to this point after reading the Pedagogy of the Oppressed. So one thing that I remember is basically back in high school, you know, mostly in my math classes. So that's one thing that a lot of students um, don't understand as to how math is um, actually taught. Um, I was lucky enough to actually be taught by a very great uh, math professor in high school who explained very thoroughly um, how to do certain formulas, how to execute the equations, etc. But um, I've also had the experience of also having teachers who didn't actually explain the proper process to um, solve a problem. So I've had um, an education from both sides and um, I could see after reading um, Ferry's book that um, there are two different methods and one works while the other one doesn't. So pretty much a banking method um, in some of these classes so in which um, curriculum has to be met and pretty much you either know the material or you don't. Um, and again, it's all based on grades, et cetera. So, so again, like I didn't know that too, too much um, back in my high school days, but I, all, but I did question as to why um, certain things were just taught without dialogue being um, engaging in some of these classes. It was just pretty much, here's the material, uh, here's the theme, or uh, this is the topic we're gonna be talking about, et cetera, and done, on to the next thing. There was never a discussion about as to why uh, certain things happened. So for example, in history classes, it was just, uh, this is how it happened, and that was it. So there was no room for uh, discussion and um, to get ideas from others um, in those courses. And it wasn't until college in which uh, I took courses in which we actually had dialogue for some of these classes. Um, and that's when I learned to realize, okay, it's like, um, now it's like I'm actually learning other things, like uh, seeing other people's opinions. Uh, we're actually having a discussion on a, on a specific topic. Uh, and that was not so much the case uh, back in high school. Um, and also when I spoke to my brother, um, who is much younger than me, is like, and how the curriculum has changed um, in the in high schools. And one thing that I remember is reading one of his math problems, and even myself is like I could not understand how to solve uh, a basic math um, algebra question because he had to do so many steps just to meet um, the expectations of curriculum. So these are one. This is probably one of the biggest thing as to uh, what I took away from the book. Um, again, like the banking system, but also the the biggest one is uh, I would say is being oppressed uh, to a degree. So that also happened during my high school days. Um, and again, not not directly from from the school itself, but mostly from uh, external factors. So pretty much family and other um, factors that affected. Uh, the cycle as Ferry calls it, uh, or prescribed cycle. Uh, and it pretty much like everything stays the same and it just repeats it over and over. So there's never any change. So that's one of the biggest things that I that uh, I came to realize is uh, the difference between oppressor and and um, then being oppressed. So, so again, like we have to make those changes early on to make sure that proper change does happen um, down the road. and again, that we don't go back and repeat our, um, our mistakes and we learn from them and we, and we grow from that. Um, and in my professional life at LaWardia, it's like uh, working with students has allowed me to see and implement certain things that um, Pedagogy of the Press has, but um, that I didn't actually realize until I read the book. So one of the things that I do try to work with students is to speak their mind that, um, that they, are 
that they don't have to be right when asking a certain question, that it's okay if, to ask a question that they're curious about, even if it may be very simple. Uh, again, that, that has happened to me in which uh, I'm too afraid to ask a simple question because I may think it's the wrong answer. Uh, but in reality, it's like there is no such thing as a wrong answer. Uh, we all have the opportunity to ask a question and maybe from the instructor, professor, teacher, or even from our fellow classmates, that's like they can shed some light as to why um, our question can have meaning to it and we can actually explore and unpack what um, the question was. So having an open dialogue with my students has helped me um, work with them um, and to be more approachable to them. So it's not me knowing everything uh, that I know. So I do tell students as like, even though I'm in my position as like, I mean, I know, know everything. I may have to go back to the um, to the books, do some research, and get back to to a, to a question that they may may be asking me. Uh, because again, I'm I don't know it all, and no one does. It's like uh, we each learn. And one thing that I do tell students is to reflect upon the work that they do, and to pretty much question as to why they're doing certain things. It's like um, why is it why. Uh, are the themes being covered in a specific class it's like or or how does it connect to their to the major etc so trying to connect the dots and understand that um, it's not all about just um, providing the information but also having an understanding as to what uh, meaning is there um, I think that's what uh, what I took away from the book itself that it's not um, me oppressing the students or the students being oppressed, but it's more about being, um, in, in, I would say, a community of engagement in which we can each feel comfortable and express our own opinions in a manner in which we can each feed off of each other and work together to um, achieve a common goal, okay? Or maybe have a discussion as to why a uh, certain viewpoint is correct or incorrect. Um, but again, with the input of everyone uh, involved in it. So that's my biggest takeaway from the book itself. And one thing that I would um, continue to actually work in my professional development um, or work at the, at the college is to keep that open mindset that I've always had is like to still be able to listen to a student and not jump ahead to conclusions, but to understand what your student is coming from um, maybe ask, um, ask questions and um, get answers as to why certain things or, or why the questions are being asked. Because again, um, we need to have um, context to get to a solution. And without context, um, again, we won't be able to provide assistance to our students who um, need that help and, and help them to be uh, better human beings and to be uh, thinkers and changers of tomorrow's world. So that's my biggest takeaway from the book. And uh, I was glad that I, that I got an opportunity to hear my other colleagues uh, speak about the book itself and um, what their thoughts, are, thoughts were and um, where they came, came from. And sometimes even uh, getting vulnerable with the work that we actually um, do at the college and also from personal experience and what led us to this point. And, uh, academia. So thank you.